Hey everybody, welcome back, or if you're new to our channel here with University Recreation at UTRGV in the Outdoor Adventure Program, thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to talk about why we dehydrate food for our camping and hiking experiences and why it's such an important part of our planning process. We're going to talk about three top reasons why this is something that we need to be thinking about doing as we're thinking about our next camping and or hiking adventure, so stick around and join us. The first reason we're going to talk about for dehydrating food when we're planning our camping or hiking experiences, this is your opportunity to control your ingredients or pack what you like. At the end of a long day of hiking, one of the best feelings is kind of settling down to a meal you know you're not only going to love, but one that's going to help you in the recovery process from the day, you know, literally refueling your body for the next day. Planning ahead and dehydrating at home in preparation for your excursion will help you avoid foods you just don't like, or if you have uh, allergies to certain foods or intolerances that you might have towards certain foods. Freezer dried meals that you might be able to get at the store, they're getting a lot better in terms of the variety of foods offered. However, it's still more difficult to find things like gluten or dairy free items in these freezer dried meals. meals. Controlling your food in general though and planning ahead allows you the opportunity to continue your diet while you're camping or on the trail. So if you're eating a heavy protein diet at home or whatever type of diet you're eating at home, you have the opportunity to continue that type of diet when you plan ahead and dehydrate. Uh, you can put together meals with the same dietary emphasis rather than rely on the freeze-dried pre-packaged meal options. Camping doesn't necessarily have to mean eating overly processed foods either that are high in maybe sodium because they're quote unquote easy to pack you know, within your pack and take up a little bit of space. We're going to talk about space later too. But again, planning ahead with your dehydrated meals is a great way to ensure that you're staying one on your diet, planning to consume the amount of calories you've lost from hiking and that's something you can think about as you're planning for your next trip, uh, but also ensuring that you are eating what you like at the end of a long day. The second reason we're going to touch on is cost efficiency. If we're taking a look at the screen here and we're showing that picture where the common brands on you know that of typical outdoor food in the outdoor at the outdoor store, um, they're kind of expensive. So simply Google camping meals. Odds are your search will yield some of those freezer dried or you know pre-dehydrated packaged meals. Don't get me wrong, this is a really good start. Uh, but take a look at the pricing of a lot of those things. Um, typically, these are not necessarily cost effective when they range anywhere between seven to ten dollars or more per package. If you're car camping for a single weekend and maybe you're not feeding that many people, that might certainly be doable. It's certainly easy and it definitely gets points for being super easy because typically all you have to do is boil and add water. That's usually how some of those or a lot of those uh, prepackaged meals work. But if you're feeding multiple people or you're camping for longer than just a weekend, the cost of those uh, pre-made freezer dried meals that you can get in the outdoor section or at the outdoor store, that is going to get quite expensive. Also, these pre-made meals might have ingredients that maybe you're not crazy about. They might also not have as much protein uh, as what you're maybe used to consuming uh, within your regular diet. Uh, in a sense, though, you're just not necessarily able to control what you're putting in your body in addition to these, these uh, uh, freezer-dried meals just being wildly overpriced. The last reason we are going to touch on today is really we're going to try to answer the question, how much can fit in your pack? Notice here that we have a few different types of packs, backpacks uh, noted. Day packs can range anywhere from 20 to 35 liters, and 35 liters is actually on the high end, with a weekend pack um, being uh, when you're packing for one to three nights where you do need to also consider a sleep system, clothes, stove, cooking pot, and utensils, and the food. Those tend to range from anywhere between 40 to 50 liters. And then there are those multi-day packs. So think with those, you're planning for three to five plus nights and the range in those might be 50 to 70 liters. All those items noted in the weekend backpack also need to be considered within the multi-day pack uh, here. But because it's a longer time frame, you're thinking about just more food that you're going to need. And ultimately, uh, how much food you need to pack is going to be determined by how long you are going to be out on your excursion. And if we think about what packs down nicer, we think about some people might pack for car camping. Maybe they have some cans in the pantry of some things and some staples that they can put in a pot and warm up. And that might work for car camping if you have, uh, say, a, 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 a camping stove, a two burner camping stove. 
The other thing you might have would be um, maybe something like a single uh, boil system or a much smaller uh, boiling system if you're out camping or hiking for multiple days. Again, we have to take some of those things into consideration as well. But safe spacing, uh, sa saving space, uh, say that five times fast, but saving space is going to be really important when we think about what we are going to end up packing. And if we think about freeze dried meals as opposed to say like uh, a can of something, obviously we're thinking about reducing weight and dehydrating is pulling all of the water out of it, making it smaller to pack. Uh, you're rehydrating it when you're on trail so that you can actually eat it, but it's pulling all of the water out of it for space savings and we're reducing the amount of weight. Uh, and, and in theory, then just hoping that you can pack a little bit more food it reasonably within your, your pack for whatever camping or hiking uh, excursion you're about ready to take on. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. We hope you learned something from uh, this particular episode with uh, Outdoor Adventure here within University Recreation at UTRGV. And just to recap, we were talking about our top three reasons why we like to think about dehydrating food when we're planning for our next camping or hiking adventure. And again, those top three reasons are we're controlling our own ingredients so we know we're packing what we like or something for our particular diet. We are definitely concerned with cost, those pre-freezer dried meals, while super easy to utilize, uh, they are qu quite costly and we need to make sure that if we're going out for longer periods of time that we're not necessarily breaking the bank in terms of how we uh, prepare to go spend some time out camping or hiking. And that third reason, and we touched on this, uh, the, the very last reason, how much can we actually carry and being realistic about that. Cans, while they might be convenient, uh, they're kind of heavy and they're going to add some additional weight to your pack. So we talked a little bit about different types of backpacks and what they're commonly used for. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good perspective uh, in terms of how much space we can save when we're thinking about dehydrating our meals at home. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this content.